The following video clips discuss the concepts of scholarly and non-scholarly sources of information, but they do not really tell why this distinction is significant. Researchers and professors talk about this distinction in terms of scholarly versus popular sources of information. Your professors want you to get into the habit of looking for the best quality information you can find, and generally want to steer you away from popular sources of information. Popular sources of information might include things like newspapers and magazines written for general, everyday reading. Also, most television and video programs, along with many websites on the open web, are considered more popular sources of information. Popular sources of information are paid for mostly through advertising. While you may pay 6 or $7 at the cash register for a magazine like Rolling Stone, publishing that issue costs the publisher far more than that, and so that's why you'll find a lot of advertisements in each issue. This also goes for the websites associated with popular magazines. The reason your professors want you to generally avoid popular sources of information is that they are written very simply and do not try to address the many subtle complexities of an issue. Also, the authors of popular information sources are rarely experts in the issues that they write about. Many are very knowledgeable about their topics, but also many write on assignment and learn only enough about the topic to give general information to their readers. Lastly, popular information sources are written, let's face it, to make money. So the writers try to make the topic appealing to the average reader. As a college student, though, you need the higher quality information of scholarly sources. This is not to say that popular information sources are of no use. They may give you good introductory information about a topic. However, in your academic level research, they should only play a minor role.